grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome today. We are looking at the topic a discourse on God's omniscience, a discourse on the omniscience of God, the omniscient God, the omniscience of God, if you want to put it in that way. That is the all knowingness of our great God, our great Redeemer, our Savior, our great Shepherd. There is no end. To knowing about God. There's actually no beginning because he that has no origin, there is no uh, beginning, there is no end to his understanding and to his knowledge, how infinite are he. So we're looking at the omniscience of God is one of those attributes of God that are key to him being the true deity. So nothing in creation is hidden from God's sight. So omniscience is basically to be all knowing that nothing can be um, nothing can be hidden from such a being. That is God is all knowing and it's a joy to the soul. It's a joy to us as believers to know more about our God. I mean the different areas so that it gives us comfort whether we're in the middle of a season or in a transition from something to another level or whether it's in a trial or faith something just rings the bell that nothing in creation is hidden from God it might be maybe unfair treatment from some quarters and what have you or some people think they can get away with things and this gives us rest and assurance that God is all-knowing not one of these things is existing or taking place without the all-knowing God. It gives a rest of assurance so that in the place of thanksgiving and prayers, whether we are supplicating, it's with understanding that nobody can get away with things, especially with we, the children of God. So everything is naked before his eyes and maybe for the purpose of... Uh, uh, we could read Hebrews 4, Hebrews chapter 4, Hebrews 4, 11, 12 talks about how all things are naked in the sight of him with whom we have to deal with Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 and 13 Hebrews 4 12 and 13 or 13 basically he said neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do it all things are naked before him so nothing is uh, invisible to God God sees all things and that actually should even regulate how we act he just doesn't see anything from external point of view alone. He also sees the hidden, the unseen part. That's very, very, <laughs> that is huge, profound. So the world is to him in transparent body. The world, there's nothing hidden in the world. There's no something buried underneath the ground or something concealed somewhere by any creature that is not transparent before God. And I think when people realize this, we find out that that's why the knowledge of God is very key. And that, that because the knowledge of God's omniscience now makes people like, wow, just imagine what surveillance camera does when the invention came out. I mean, crime rate went down drastically because people were like, look, they don't want to be caught, they don't want to be seen. And so now imagine people now are aware that, look, it's not just theoretical, the all-seeing eye of God is everywhere. I mean, you don't want to even... Just knowledge of that we keep a lot of nefarious activities down, I believe. And also the knowledge that it doesn't just see all things externally, but it also sees into the heart. Ha! Ah. Before thoughts start coming and thoughts, when thoughts are coming, it's like you just regulate yourself, like you're driving and you're putting the steering that look, God can see this if I'm wishing ill towards my fellow brother. God is the God of all knowledge. Let me read from First Samuel chapter 2. This was Anna's eulogy to the Lord. Uh, when God answered our prayer, First Samuel chapter two, I think verse two, three. So let me read from verse two. It said, "There is none holy as the Lord; neither is any beside you; neither is any rock like our God." And verse, um, where is it? The Lord, verse three. Talk no more so exceedingly proud. Let no arrogance come out of your mouth, for the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by Him actions are weighed. And when we say actions are weighed, it's not just externally per se. God also looks into the range. He says he's a God that tests the heart. So God is a God of knowledge. And there, there can be two gods of knowledge. That is, it's a known unto God that all this works from the beginning of the world. God knows everything there is to know. And out of this compendium of knowledge that he is, he now invites and says, call unto me and I will show you. Because Knowledge is a currency. Everything, almost everything around us here is a function of knowledge. There was a time the, the knowledge available did not give back to invention. Every invention and creativity, I dare say, is a function of higher level of knowledge. There was a time there was no airplane in the world because the knowledge base was not up to that point. 
for the appropriate knowledge start increasing god start unfolding things then man is able to create man is able to produce things that will also bless humanity so knowledge is very very key to us as believers god has perfect knowledge of all things all situations and all creatures so there is no circumstance or season or things I'm passing through that God is not fully aware. And this is where we now pray to God to open our eyes because we might be going through certain season and there's something God actually wants to walk through that season. And in the natural contents of the canal, we man we like to avoid anything that is discomforting or doesn't already follow their set pattern. But when God opens our understanding, this is what I'm working in this season. This is what I want to use this situation to accomplish in this. There will be a positive attitude. There will be a positive response. Like God taking them through the wilderness in Israel. I mean, if understanding was open that, look, I'm trying to get Egypt out of you. I'm trying to purge you of certain things. Then it will not be a matter of, oh, we don't have cucumber. We, we are just eating this. We want to, I mean, it will, be, it will make a whole lot of difference. So to have that side that God has perfect knowledge. Perfect knowledge is like a knowledge that can, you can get a better knowledge of all things, of all situations and all creatures. He knows everybody, whether they acknowledge him or not. He created them. And so this is why he even charges us to even pray for our leaders. We love our neighbors. How do we love them? Principally, one of the highest way of loving them is interceding for them. Even when they are one way doing things, maybe persecuting or something like that, but we are praying that God will open their eyes of understanding. The breath or the oxygen they are breathing is not coming from another place. It's God that is giving that access to them. So if God has access to in their heart, to their nostrils, He definitely has access to whatever they are doing. So, but we have to stand in the place of prayers as believers. So the cloud has no canopy, nor the night a curtain to veil us from His sight. That nothing can cover us. So let's not let nobody be fooled that okay, the clouds are there. God can't see through the cloud or the night imagine that there's a curtain that is covering it because there's no darkness before god god sees everything is as clear before him you and i need light for our eyes to see either the sunlight or natural light without that we'll be in darkness but god needs no light because god is his own light by which he sees his light is not dependent so that's why even the new jerusalem in revelation 22 that the sun will not be the light the lord himself will be the light so he himself is the true light so nothing can be hidden from him so no cloud can put a curtain or a veil over us that God will not be able to see and that's I think what God was saying in Jeremiah 23 23 to 24 when he said am I a God that is just in heaven am I not everywhere do I not feel it can any man do anything and I will not know even in darkness no creature can hide from his all seeing high no creature and in the place of adoration and praise I mean meditating on this is like God you are just blessing God on the spirit and just appreciating him because it's like, wow, that no creature can hide from your all-seeing eye. So even when I'm praying or when I'm thinking or things, whatever I'm doing in the restroom, in the kitchen and driving, going out, it's like God's all-seeing eye. I mean, he said the Lord, the eyes of the Lord runs to and through the whole war, showing itself strong and mighty on behalf of those whose hearts are loyal to him. It keeps us calm. That's the point I'm trying to make here. It doesn't make off. He said, he said, uh, it said um, uh, in that Matthew 11 that call up uh, that, that come unto me all you that labor and heavy living and I will give you rest for the joy to him the night shines as bright as day so there's no difference he that created the cat to see at night will he have a problem in seeing at night you know these cats lions and what have you their sights are as sharp as in the day and as, as, as it is in the night so we see this fact that God to him there is no and this doesn't just mean physical nightmares it could be a situation a night season somebody is going through and yet god can see through that funnel of dark situation appear as so supposedly dark situation because god calls forth light out of darkness so to him the night shines as bright as day and so we now see it from that this is our father who sees all who knows all and who is also able to bring through all that's why i said that even though you walk through the valley by the even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil for thou art with me his presence because he can see all the terrain and the possible things around so there is no single thought of our heart that escapes his knowledge and this is why i mean all through scriptures we keep saying it god charging and exhorting this book of the law shall not depart from your eyes you will meditate day and night 
blessed is the man who delights in the in the law of his God. He, he needs he meditate day and night. God let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Your word have I hidden in my heart. And so the more we are doing this, God is fully aware because God's word is what God Himself. So what happens is that by that everything that will be said whatever is good and noble we should think on such things you know the way our thoughts work our thoughts follow our dominant um our most dominant i mean our words follow our the most dominant thoughts and what we feed what we see determine what we are going to think about it's impossible for you to think about something you never you never heard in your life before if you've never heard something like um uh, something like Igboru Mole, it doesn't make anything to your mind it can't but someone that has heard something like that a picture comes in so that's how the thoughts work it's a function of what we're seeing and hearing god now says let your my, my word come in you in abundance so that it will create it will produce the right thoughts you say a good man out of the good treasure stored in his that will bring for good fruit so there is not a word that any creature whispers that is inaudible to god even what they think in their heart i mean that's why it's one of those attributes that men are scared of because people like to do things in hidden and it's not like everybody everyone some people have graduated beyond that where they've pushed their thought but it's a self-regulating thing to be aware that god even to speak against another person it's it's uh, to speak ill that god can hear this it's not that you can hear it this is not even doesn't make sense even to think of it is even a self-caution but if people don't know they just say, okay god knows everything god sees everything in like in an academic exercise way or just like a um like i mean um just as if like okay the sun is everywhere the light of the sun is everywhere just something like okay it's not a big deal but when they realize that actually what is happening to them in life and what is attracted to them in life is a function of what is actually going on inside because whatever is going on inside is magnetizing things towards a person and now god now say whatever is good noble you think on such things so for our thoughts to be well pleasing to god there is that knowledge that revelation that god can see through my heart and it's not just because he can see through my heart i want to force myself to think right no it's a pleasure it helps me to purge myself it helps me to cleanse myself of any filthiness in the thought so his infinite knowledge makes it impossible for him to be deceived he's the only one that cannot be deceived god is the only being that can never be deceived so a creature can deceive satan it's possible even bible said it deceive in terms of not trying to i don't want to use deceive in a bad way but deceive deception is terrible it's bad it's of the devil is the one that goes with deception but God is the only one that nobody because to deceive anybody you have to have crafted a knowledge into something that they don't know or you twisted a body of knowledge and they didn't detect it so it's impossible for the all-knowing God to be deceived I mean that's why people see it as being very unwise I can sit and just be telling God that look and uh, this whole earth has been given to me and uh, bow before me okay turn this stone to bread you are talking to god the maker you're trying to deceive and to bring deception <laughs> wow well, but it's infinite so the knowledge is not just knowledge there's knowledge you and i have but nobody has infinite infinite knowledge is a knowledge that cannot be measured it's a knowledge that it's um that's that that has no beginning and has no end is a knowledge that is all encompassing i have knowledge probably more in accounting and somebody might have more knowledge in this area of science or medicine another person might have more abundance of now we all have knowledge in certain areas at least at the treasury but some of us are experts in certain areas and that's actually what determines the value we bring to any space but god is a an expert a specialist all knowing in every area so our thoughts are as loud in his ears as our words that my thoughts are very loud in the ears of god as my words. so it's not just what i'm saying that god is listening to prayer is not just what we utter with our lips much more what is going on in our heart people could be praying and actually what they are praying with their lips and their heart is far I say these people draw near to me with their mouth but their heart is far from me so and uh, Ephesians 3, God says he's able to do exceedingly abundant above all we can ask or think. So anything that is going on in our hearts, it's uh, this kind of a revelation makes us to, I mean, pour our hearts before God. Like David said in Psalm 113, I don't know if we'll have time. He says, search me and see if there's any iniquity in me that you know my thoughts, my going out and my every part. I mean, it was like, look, God, I can't hide from you. 
I better just acknowledge that I can't help myself if you don't help me. So no creature is invisible to him. That's why it's, it's almost foolish for I mean, our first parents to think they can hide from God. Say, I heard your voice and I hid myself. Or was it Cain or Cain again? Like, why, why are you to ask me, am I my brother's keeper? <laughs> because men didn't know. People are lying. Even today, people are not so aware that, look, there's no way God is not. If God asks, is asking the question, it's not that he doesn't know the answer. He just wants to bring out your ignorance that is in you. So you better acknowledge before it that only thou know it. So no creature is hidden to him. Whether they are underneath the ground, under the waters, whether they are invisible to the natural eye, there is no creature that is everyone is naked. And there are invisible things, right? You know, Colossians 1, he created, he made all the, by him all things were created, whether they be dom thrones, dominions, visible or invisible. So he that made invisible things like spirit and what have you, he knows they are all they are in, they are not invisible to him. It's you and I with the natural eyes in the human context, but things are naked before the Lord. So Psalm so 139. O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. You have searched my down sitting and my uprising. You understand my thoughts are far off. You encompass my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. To acknowledge it that look you are acquainted with all my ways that is the before for there is not a word in my tongue but lo oh lord you know it it thou has been behind me and as and a and, uh, hand upon me verse 6 this sort of knowledge is too wonderful to me it is high and i cannot attain it so god knows whatever is knowable and unknowable so all there is to know in any field because let's bring this home so in any work I'm doing, in any area of life, my field or my vocation, there are more undiscovered knowledge in that area that will still be a blessing to humanity that is yet to be discovered. Now as a child of God, we are a kingdom and a priest unto our God to reign on the earth. How do we reign on the earth? God shows us a body of knowledge that makes us to bat what eyes have not seen, what ears have not heard. Then we reign on earth in that way, in that field. And we become a person of influence. Men are able to see our good work and glorify our Father in heaven. So God knows whatever is knowable. And he has complete perfect knowledge of it. And he knows what can never be known. That is what is unknowable. What nobody. You see, what we know as human is like a drop in a bucket. What we don't know is like an ocean. So there are so many things. The best of us, there are so many things that we are even yet to know. So God is the embodiment or the compendium of all knowledge. Whether it is in the area of science, in the area of politics, sports, in the area of agriculture, in any field. God is the compendium, the embodiment of all knowledge. In Him are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Now, knowledge in any field is adding value to humanities from Him. So, when we hear things like, okay, there's a discovery that has been made in the med a medical field, whereby maybe... Uh, robots could perform operations or some surgical things or something. Let's not think it's texting from God. I believe it is God that gave them that body of knowledge because there is going to add value to humanity. It's going to save life. It's going to save time. And what I'm not saying everything man creates because there are some dubious things man has created that that, that might be devilish things that are not add. That's why we put it there, adding value to humanity. God, whether it's a drug, whether it's a medicine, no matter what it is, if it's bringing value to humanity. Like the creation of the airplane, it's not without the knowledge of God. The Wright brothers, I mean, they were, they were Christians, Sunday school teachers in Ohio, seeing the boats flying and the technology behind us. So, and there's still many more inventions and creativity this art is yet to see. And that's why the Spirit of the Lord is in us to show us what eyes have not seen and ears have. So, his knowledge is neither acquired or not taught. Nothing is new information to him. For you and I to know anything better, we have to acquire more knowledge. In any field, anybody is a specialist. They are an acquisition of or an embodiment of vast knowledge in that area. That's why they call them specialists or subject matter specialists because they've given themselves to it and whatever that resource is anywhere around the world, they will spare no cost because for them to remain relevant in that field, they have to continue to discover things that are yet to be known. Now God now calls, that's why a lot of the prayers in the New Testament is that the eyes of our understanding may be enlightened. God is the only one that never acquires knowledge or is taught. His knowledge is not derived from something external of him. It is himself. That's why he's the God of all knowledge. His knowledge base is 
um, not from a library. It's not from any vessel, any creature. Everybody is drawing from him. He is not drawing from anybody. That's why I said, no, not to God that all this works from the beginning of this. So there is no iota of mistake in his knowledge. His knowledge is unhearing. There is no error. No one can find the, 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 the slightest bit of error. That's why, with that, or else there's no point praying to a God that we give you a knowledge and that knowledge base will lose relevance or that knowledge that he gives to you doesn't work out. Then why the essence of tarrying, waiting, if it's not, if there's, a, if there's a slight chance it might not work. There is no such with God. When God gives the knowledge, or well, we call it revelation, a rema, it is as potent as God himself. Because God said in the beginning was the world, the world was God, and the world was God. So this is why we labor in the world. Maybe that's the description to use. That we labor in the world. Our laboring in the world is because it's a treasure. How I love your law. What? In it, I, I, I derive more pleasure. As, as David said in Psalm 119, it's like someone who finds great treasure. <laughs> because it's a treasure in itself. Because you are talking about something that created the whole universe. That's a treasure. So his knowledge is instantaneous. He alone knows the past, the present, the future, all at once. For me to know anything, I have to go into my archive to find out my brain juggles it or find from some people to try to bring out. But God is the only one that knows all things instantaneous. Not without thinking, okay, let me think about that. Oh, really? And some could also argue from the point of, okay, if God knows all things, why was it that when they were building the Tower of Babel, that they said, oh, God came that let us see what they were doing. Does it mean that somebody gave him information or and what have you? It is the way we are interpreting and reading the Bible. Or in the case of Sodom and Gomorrah, when um, the scripture said that the report, God was telling Abraham that the report has come, that this is what they, God knows all things. I think the way we interpret what is happening is, or else it's not all knowing. If anything can be happening anywhere in creation that is not aware, hey, Hebrews 4 says all things are naked and open before the eyes of him. So to realize the fact that when we hear that somebody is reporting to God or the scripture said that uh, 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 God remembered, <laughs> it will almost sound like God forgot. <laughs> I think it's just the way as humans, the way we read the Bible, thinking that God, he might come to mind, doesn't mean he forgot. There are things I could bring to my mind, doesn't mean I forgot about them. And let's not use our own human framework of, uh, of memory to equate that to that which is of God, which is infinite, <laughs> which is not created. So, his knowledge is retentive and eternalized. That is, his knowledge can't increase nor decrease. My knowledge in any field, I am by the mercy of God, on the person of God, the Trinity, the Son, the, Fa the Father, the Son, the Spirit, I want more knowledge about that area. And I, by the grace of God, to be praying that, Father, increase in your knowledge grace and peace be multiplied to me through the knowledge of God and our Lord Jesus Christ to grow deeper in the revelation of the person of God and to do because whatever I am to, to be more fruitful more knowledge has to come because it helps my prayer life it helps your prayer life it helps every one of us in terms of praise and adoration because what is actually happening is that the more of God we know our faith is built the more trust we have in him the more songs and hymns in our heart is coming forth from. That's what the angels are singing day and night because God is revealing himself and as he's revealing it's even different aspect of him and it's like wow, wow, wow. Huh? So his infinite knowledge forbids any ignorance in him. The infinite knowledge of God forbids any iota of ignorance. Ignorance cannot be found in God. It is impossible. It is impossible for the least ignorance to be discovered to be found in God because what is he going to be ignorant for? He made all things. All things depend upon him. All things are, are, they are, they are slaves. They are, they are like nothing before him. So there is no how something is happening that is not aware of. All things exist in him. In him we live, we move and have our being. So how can he be ignorant? Can water be ignorant of whatever any fish is doing inside it? Because it's the very substance. So his knowledge makes him the perfect person to judge all persons, matters and things. That's why he's the judge of the living and the dead. If he doesn't know all things, how will all things on the last day be brought into record on the day of judgment? And because you can't have judgment without having whatever you are going to use as an evidence or as a witness against anyone you are judging. But that's what makes him the perfect judge in everything. And he's a perfect judge that doesn't judge by external standards alone or 
external out, outward actions but by actually the motives behind what they did which is not visible to the to the uh, to the to the natural judge but god is a god that goes beyond the physical and also goes he can see behind to see the motives behind it so that's why that's why it's qualified he has perfect knowledge hence is the perfect judge to judge any matter any situation any circumstance any instant that's why we even plead for his mercy because sometimes we think we are right but God can see beyond what we can see so his justice is flawless because his knowledge is perfect because if you have perfect knowledge all things being equal your judgments will be perfect and that's why the foundation of his throne is righteousness and justice God is the judge of all God is the one that can judge any matter perfectly so there is no injustice in God God has not done the least injustice to any creature there is no creature that can raise their hand that God has treated them unfairly. No creature. But you and I know how much we have treated God unfairly, whether it is in terms of our first parent or even we ourselves, whether by our thoughts, actions, or words. And yes, the days of ignorance we make at it, but, may, but God has never treated any creature wrongly. And we never treat any creature wrongly. Rather, we'll be looking for a way of escape for them. We'll be looking for a way to show mercy on them. And that's just the love of God. That's the mercy of God, the goodness of God, the kind-heartedness of God towards His creation. So He who is omniscient needs no eyewitness to judge any matter. Anyone. That's why in the case of Cain, when God came to meet with him, he didn't need an eyewitness to say, yes, I mean, your blood, the blood of your brother is crying. But God saw all he did. When uh, David as well took Uriah's wife, I mean, God saw it. I mean, so God, there's nothing that can be hidden. And the earlier we know and grow more in this, the better will be how we act towards one another. And I'm not saying that it takes the grace of God to be self, to be aware by the Spirit of God that God knows this. I can't be thinking this towards this. That's why my thought is now being purged, is now being sanctified. Every element of pride is living because I'm aware that God is watching. And it's not just watching like some kind of a, I mean, um, inspector who is ready to hit your head if you think. No, no. It's to help you to see the frailty of yourself. That, ah, look, I have to be filled with the Spirit so that no kind of um, unwanted thoughts will be lingering in my heart, let alone actions, hidden actions somewhere. So it needs no informant. All things exist in him. You only need an informant because you are not there or you are not an, a witness, a, an eyewitness of that situation. God doesn't need an informant because everything exists in Him. Everything lives in Him. Everything moves in Him. The whole creation is in Him. Because if, say, if you say that, okay, and that God is living in His creation, yes, it's true. But much more true is that before anything was created, He existed. So where was He existing before anything was created? Before land, water. Huh? So you can see that creation exists in Him. Hence, He doesn't need an external informant. But in the place of prayer, that's why someone said that we're not doing a lot of talking. He said, your father knows you need these things, but seek you first. He gives you a priority. We are actually interceding for nations. We are praying to him, not giving him an updated information. This is what I'm going to. This is what the nation is going to. He already knows. Yes, we bring it in the place of prayer, but much more we are praying to him. What is your will? Open our eyes. What are the steps we need to take? We need strategy. We are not coming to tell you what is on ground. You know what is on ground, but help us to walk in alignment with your agenda, your counsel, your purpose in this situation, in this season, in this area. So, his judgments are not by facts alone, but also by hidden motives of the heart. So, when God is judging a matter or a situation, it's not just by what they did or what they didn't do, but mainly it's by the thought or the motive. And you know, in even in common law cases, they will give more punitive punishment to premeditated crimes because they see that that you had an opportunity to stop it so god is always after the motive that's why i said i uh, think for he said man looks at the outward god looks at the inward so god is searching what will lead to this and that's why the lord said that look that uh, that uh, that is not what you take from outside that defy you but it is what actually gets into your heart that is like the evil treasure in people is what gives rise to all kinds of nefarious activities and what have you so his judgments are not by fact alone but also by hidden motives of the heart the motive the intention 
and what have you. And that's why even people can bring offering. People can pray and what have you. But God is looking at what is the... If someone could pray that, look, I want anointing, I want to be uh, to be able to be used by God. But God can see that the motive behind this is wrong. And so in the place of prayer is a place where we lie naked before God. Search me, as David said in Psalm 139. He who planted the hair shall he not hear? Let me read that from Psalm 94. God that planted the hair, we need not, I think it's from Psalm 94, that he who gives eye shall he not see. Psalm 94, um, Psalm 94 verse 8, Understand you brutish among the people, and you fools, when will you be wise? He that planted the hair, shall he not hear? He that formed the eye, shall he not see? Will it be possible for someone to create the hair that he is, and he will not hear? Or do we think anything will ever be inaudible to him? Even before it is said, God already knows it. And that's why certain things that come our way in life is to help us, to regulate us, to not say certain things or act in a certain way. Because what is actually happening is that we, God is trying to keep us from falling into those traps by teaching us certain things so that we, when they appear, it's like ah, God knew that this thing will happen and he already prepared me and just warned me about these steps and what have you. So he will form the eye, shall he not see? In that same Psalm 94 verse, uh, 94 verse 9 and also verse 10, he that chasten the head and shall not he correct, he that teacheth man knowledge shall not he know. In verse 11, the Lord knoweth the thought of man that they are vanity. So God knows every thought in our hearts, thoughts that are even yet to germinate. And that's why he counsels us that we should let the word of Christ dwell in us richly. As the word dwells in us richly, our heart does not have a choice and our mind do not have a choice but to think on what is a dominant thought in us. That he who teaches man knowledge shall he not know. So no matter the work of our lives, the area, our vocation, we go to God, teach me. I think it was in Isaiah somewhere, whether 28, where God saying the farmer is the one that teaches him how to farm. So every field, God is saying, like I'm a specialist in this area, I can show you things that is yet to be known. I can even teach you better than is already known. And because that way we now give back to things that are blessing to humanity. He who made the heart, shall he not know everything transpiring in it? So how can God create the human heart and is not aware how things are unfolding there. And that's why the word of God was given to us as the only medicine that touches the heart of man. That's the only detergent that can purge the heart of man and sanctify it. And so we find that, that the, and the heart of man is like the engine of a human. Without the heart, you can't give with a willing heart. Without the heart, you can't truly pray. Because what you'll be saying is just, uh, I mean, vain repetition. Without the heart, you find that, that the person, um, or oh, said that guard your heart with all the for out of it are the issues of life. And so you just find out that that's like the capital city of every every human being. God is now saying guard it. So God knows what is going to say. That's why when God is telling us that we hide his word in our heart. Hiding the word of God in our heart is almost is, is, is equivalent to hiding God in our hearts because God and his word are one. That heart now is now sanctified. That heart is now hallowed as a dwelling place of God. And from there, we now find rivers of living water flowing from it and blessing humanity. He is light and in him is no darkness. First John chapter 1. God is light and in him is no darkness. First John chapter 1 verse 9. He said, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. Then verse, um, uh, verse, I think it's verse 5. First John chapter 1 verse 5. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. God can see in you what neither you nor anyone can see. So <laughs> that's the mystery of our being that there are things I can't see in myself that others cannot even see. There are things they can see, I can see. There are things I can see, they can see. But both what I can see and they can see and what they can see and I can see, God can see all things. And both, both what we cannot even see, God can see them. That's why we come to the place of prayer for God to purge us. That's why we hide His word in our heart to reveal our thoughts even before ourselves so that we can ask for help that this is a pattern why am I talking this way? Why am I thinking this way? 
and God is now by spirit being able to help us to navigate because we can't play phoniness or hypocrisy with God. We might as well just cut this right there that look, God, you know all things. There are things I don't know. Please help me. To acknowledge our vulnerability before him and not to just try to chest stomp as if we got it together. His infinite knowledge is comforting to his children and discomforting to his enemies. Remember Second Corinthians, First Corinthians, that I didn't know they would not have crucified the Lord of glory because the knowledge base of God is always far infinitely ahead of every strategy of the enemy. God knows what the enemy knows. God knows more than what the enemy knows. He knows their true baby trap. He knows the weakness of their plan. I said, this is why it's a joy. He said, call Jeremiah 33. I love the interpretation. Someone said that their uh, mommy ready to put the scripture this week. Jeremiah 33 said, call unto me and I'll show you great and mighty things which you don't know. That the way she interpreted was like, call upon me and I will show you things that had you known, your life would have been far better. Ha! Lord have mercy. <laughs> that had I knew. I love that knowledge that things. And there are many things that I need to know for my life to be far better, to be adding more value, to be more fruitful tomorrow. So this is why we come to God in the place of prayer. That's why we come to God to open our eyes, to help our understanding. So as the sun always shines, so God always knows. God is never without knowledge. God is never without, I mean, abundant knowledge in any area or in any field. God is an all-knowing God. All things are naked and open and transparent before Him. So, you can't keep the sun from shining. What we call sun, like, uh, sun, uh, the sun is setting, the sun is not really going there. The sun is still shining. It's just the earth that is moving away and around from it. So, as the sun always knows, God will always know over any matter, over any situation. In His eminence, God is always above. Therefore, sees the motion of all. He sees the motion, the step-by-step, step, the the things done by everybody. Nothing is hidden from him. Nothing can be concealed from him. <laughs> it's a mystery in his eminence, that is in his majesty, in his glory, in his uh, infinitude, in his absoluteness. God is above all, in his transcendence. Therefore, sees the motion of all. All things are like, I mean, they are naked before him. God being above all, about all, and in all, sees the motion of all. This is, I mean, from here, let me just read Jeremiah 30, Jeremiah 23, 20, 23 to 25. Jeremiah 23. Let me read 24. He said, Can anyone hide himself in the secret place, and shall I not see him, said the Lord? Do not I feel heaven and earth, said the Lord. And this was, I mean, saying all kinds of things as if God was not aware of what they were doing in their coven, in their sacred place. So, God is a God of knowledge and is a comfort to us. As the sun cannot be without light, so God can never lack knowledge in anything. Can never. It's the best place to get knowledge from. And I'm not saying we don't go to a library, maybe to a study and what have you. God will often open our understanding through resources around us. So it's not like God is just going to speak to me directly about maybe chemistry, if my field is uh, legal practice. No, well, that's not what we are saying. God will use materials already. Daniel was besoiling the law, but he said he understood by books. Paul too was an avid reader. He said, study to show yourself a proof. So we study and God now directs our path, bring a body of knowledge our way because there are things he has already revealed to those who live before us. He doesn't repeat everything he's saying every time. That's why I said I'll, I'll, that you are entering into the harvest of others that have labor. You are entering into the others too. We enter into our own harvest, into our own labor. Huh? So his omniscience makes us trust him even when we cannot fathom him. So even when we don't understand it, but we trust in him. This is why we know all things we work together for our good because we know that in my, like the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ, it didn't, how will glory come out of it? He's God. He can bring water from the rock, water from the desert, he can part the rest. He is God. He's the God of all flesh. Nothing is impossible with him. So even when we can't see the way through, even when we don't know how we will do what looks like an impossible situation, we realize that his omniscience makes us trust him. And in the place of trust, we now start thanking him in advance. How will the dead person after four days in Lazarus come back to life? He is God. Huh? How will water turn to wine? He is God. How will uh, five loaves fill 
5,000 men, you know, explain children and women, is God. So to be omniscient and to be ignorant is a gross contradiction. It's a gross contradiction. It's not, it's not possible for a person or a being or a deity to be ignorant in an area and at the same time to be omniscient. Because omniscient is an attribute that belongs to God and God alone. This is an attribute that he doesn't share. It's one of his incommunicable attributes. There are other attributes that he shares with us, his children, like his love, his mercy. Um, he wants us to have wisdom, though we never have any of those things in immeasurable or infinite measure as he but he share. But omniscient, this that's to be all knowing, <laughs> that is God. So all treasures of knowledge are locked up in God. Let me read Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. He said, In him, I think Colossians chapter 2, verse 3. He said, In whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So, every treasure of knowledge is in God. There is a knowledge base for this year that if I get to know of it, this year will change dramatically and for the better for me and my ministry for you as well there's a knowledge base even in the country where you are in there are, that's why they call it mysteries classified information so and god reveals that to his children so we pray that you might give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you and the eyes of our understanding being enlightened to know the hope of your calling and the exceeding greatness of your power towards us who believe. So no creature can have any knowledge but as God is pleased to give it. If God doesn't give that knowledge, you won't find it in Google. There are certain things God knows, billion, innumerable things God knows that it is not available anywhere else apart from Him. That's why He, that, uh, Proverbs 25 verse 2 says that it is the glory of God to conceal a thing. It is the honor of kings to search it out. So God can conceal things, like the case of Nebuchadnezzar when he dreamt and he couldn't interpret all the handwriting on the wall. But it is God that now can reveal such things because he has perfect, he knows perfectly the most profound secret, the most profound or the, the, the best, the, the most kept secret. It's not secret before God. It might be scripted to humans, but they are known to God. And this is why as children of God, this is for our rising. Because God doesn't really hide things from His children. He hides things for us, not from us. In the place of prayer, when we position ourselves, that's why we pray in the Spirit. Because it's almost like praying in the Spirit is like downloading mysteries. We are speaking mysteries to God. And now He gives understanding to our heart. Then we say, we see. It's like we are drawing or downloading from the realm of the unknown to the realm of the known. So that we can shine as light to His glory. So to be all-knowing is to be God. Anything short of being all-knowing, that is not the true God. And God is the all-knowing God. So to be all-knowing is simply to be God. All-knowing in science, all-knowing in art, all-knowing in sport, in politics, in every area of life. To be all-knowing is simply to be God. So God knows all there is to know in any field. And what can also never be known, God is perfectly acquainted with them. So today we've been able to look at the topic, a discourse on God's omniscience. And we say God's omniscience is His all-knowingness, is His knowledge base of everything and every area. There is not a, an iota of gap in the knowledge of God. There is no gap in the knowledge. God's knowledge is perfect. It's a knowledge that cannot increase or decrease. What God knows, God knows all at once. It is not gradual. His knowledge base is not by acquisition of knowledge, or neither is it thought, or by an eyewitness. But God knows all things, because no known to God that all is worked from the beginning of the world. That he not only knows all there is to know, he also knows what can never be known. What is forever hidden, what is uh, forever eternally impossible for any human being to know, God knows it. And so this is why in our adoration and praise of Him, our heart is always full with joy, thanking Him, appreciating Him that He is all-knowing. So that when we are praising Him, when we are praying to Him, when we are trusting in Him, when we are giving to His kingdom, any spiritual thing from when we are thinking of Him, it's with majesty, it is it's with adoration. That's the awesomeness of God, the all-knowingness of God. It helps us in the place of prayer. It also gives strength and stamina to us to tarry before Him because we know just one word from God will give us what a thousand years of labor could never have given unto us. So, to be all-knowing is to be God, to be the true and living God, the deity that knows all things. Nothing is hidden from Him. 
all things are naked before his eyes. What a joy to the glory of God. Hallelujah to God the Father. Hallelujah to God the Son. Hallelujah to God the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.